So there I was, clearing out a skeleton fort when I heard it. The unmistakable sound of a Fort of Fortune. It was go time. I knew I had a limited window of opportunity to get to the fort first, and it was a bit of a trek, judging by the size of the skull and distance, but I couldn't just leave the loot I had earned behind, so I loaded up the rowboat with my goodies and docked it to my ship. The skull had appeared direct south of where I was at Sharkfin Camp, so I knew it could only be the Crow's Nest Fortress. As we began our journey, I played treasure organizer with the loot already on board before moving on to what was in the rowboat, and yes, of course I brought the stronghold keg. For those who have watched my keg stacking video, you know I have little fear of the boom booms these days. But to play it safe, I placed it on my bowsprit and continued organizing. That may have come back to haunt me. Unfortunately, we didn't get very far when we heard another sound, that of a spawning skeleton ship. Being in a sloop, I knew that we would only be facing off against another sloop, so I wasn't too concerned. But there was still the matter of the keg on the bowsprit, and every moment we delayed was a moment someone else could get to the Fort of Fortune first. So hammer away with the cannons I did. I was preparing for another broadside encounter when I got the notification that the ship had been sunk. And since it didn't take too long, I did end up harpooning the treasure on board the ship. Hey, what can I say? Hashtag greedy pirate, right? and we continued on our journey. I had another session of treasure organizing. Come on. I know I'm not the only pirate who does this between islands. Don't judge me. And I was still in the process of doing that when the next music sting entered the fray. This time, it was gonna be a Megalodon. I know that many people complained that Megs were near impossible to find for like half a year, but ever since season nine was released, I feel like I must have some sort of shark bait attached to my boat because there's not a single session I have where I don't encounter at least three of them. And this one was proving to be a bit uncooperative with their trajectory. I managed to land a couple of shots on him, but he did not appreciate that. I'll let Video John do the talking here. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Straight at the keg, are you kidding me? Back to the ship, get back to the ship. With just a few seconds to spare, I managed to climb back on board the Bardcore Beauty, bucket her, and repair the holes before she went under. Having almost lost my ship in the process, I was absolutely going to collect this treasure before moving on with our adventure. Finally, I was close enough to spyglass the actual fort, and what do you know, someone had gotten to it first. This was a dilemma. I wasn't deterred just yet, thinking about a course of action while I made a long circle around the fortress. I could go over and attempt to negotiate with this other sloop, but after a month or so of Season 9 already being out, it seems pirates are out for blood when it comes to these events, due to the always-in-demand Chest of Fortune. On top of that, I already had a good amount of loot on board my ship. If things went south, everything would be at risk. I decided I was going to park my ship inside of Thieves' Haven, pointed at one of the exits in case I was in need of a quick getaway. It turned out that sloop was a Reaper sloop, so negotiations were now out of the question. It was far too risky for me to put the whole ship in peril. Instead, we were going to have to go quiet and see what we can come up with. I took the best food I could carry, along with a supply of blunder bombs, and cast off on my rowboat, making my way towards the Crow's Nest Fortress. I felt okay about the ship, but this was my first attempted steal of a Fort of Fortune since Season 9's release, so I was a bit worried about sea rust. Unfortunately, night was turning into day, which meant that I was going to lose one of my best advantages here in the cover of darkness. I also didn't know whether this was going to be a solo player or a duo crew, since a sloop could be either configuration. I did know that there were no other ships in the local vicinity though, which meant this was our best chance at achieving a result. As the music swelled and we approached the fort, I thought I had made a critical error in getting far too close with the rowboat. Close enough that I could see the figures of skeletons and at least one player on the fort, the sounds of gunshots echoing. I pivoted the rowboat to try and get some distance before the player noticed a shape in the water and dove into the sea. Of course, my mermaid spawned right in front of me, not quite in visible range of the island, but definitely from the ship. I dove back under the water, passing by the first tower. I thought about stopping at the tower closest to the ship, 
but suddenly the music shifted into the boss phase, and I knew that there wasn't much time to waste. Instead, I approached the sloop and kept close, listening intently for the sounds of footsteps or weapons. Hearing none, I swiftly climbed aboard, raced downstairs, and tucked away in the corner, on the sloop bedding. Right on time, too, as the fort had just been completed, more than likely with a few kegs to speed things up. The speed of the completion, though, made me think that I was dealing with another solo player. Still, I kept tucked away for the time being and listened. A couple of things needed to go right for me here. First, my mermaid needed to have disappeared with a tuck. Every now and again, I feel like that mermaid likes to stick around a bit longer than desired, and that would give away everything. The sound of the vault door opening eased my concerns with that. But it would also look supremely suspicious if anyone saw my rowboat that was floating not too far away from the other side of the island. The sound of the harpoon firing let me know that we were collecting treasure, but I had only heard just two items being collected. It seemed like our target was only collecting the chest of fortune and one other item, more than likely a chest of legends. That theory was affirmed for me when I heard the sound of the sail dropping and the ship creaking against the waves. Now the question was, where were we going? Was it going to be an immediate drop off or did this player have other plans? For several agonizing minutes, I waited below decks. But when the Ancient Spire title card came up on screen, I knew it was now or never. Leaving the tuck, I raced up the stairs. One player, Reaper costume, chest of fortune in hand, it was gonna be mine. The Reaper likely had little idea of what was happening until it was too late. I let the ship crash into the Spire rocks while I jumped off, racing my character toward the Gold Holder tent for the turn-in. Success! We had done it, a stolen chest of fortune. But we weren't done just yet. There was still plenty of loot at the fortress waiting to be collected, and we potentially had a very angry Reaper that was going to come after it. I mermaided back to my ship, only to find us under fire? Luckily, it wasn't a player ship, but rather the island cannons that were just missing the target. We quickly made our way toward the fortress, and that's when I spotted that the Reaper sloop at Ancient Spire had sunk. I don't know if it was because the player was only interested in chests of fortune or was rage quitting, but I admit, I felt badly about it, especially as someone who mostly plays solo. I know what it's like to lose and lose big, and having something snatched from you right at the finish line is the worst feeling. If it wasn't since they were flying reapers that I had a ton of loot on my ship already and that the chest of fortune was such a hot commodity, I may have chosen a different path. But I hadn't, because in the end, this is Sea of Thieves, right? So there you have it. A stolen photo of fortune in its entirety, save for a few skeleton orders. Maybe next time you see a cracked red skull in the sky, you'll think to take a chance and place a bet on yourself. Who knows? You may come out on top. And until the next adventure, this is John Bardcore signing off, saying so long and take care.